Okay, uh, today we will be exploring the fascinating intersection between real world economies and virtual economies. Over the years, the gaming industry has become a multi billion dollar industry, and as such, really intricate uh, virtual economies have become embedded in games. In fact, game economies are so well designed that economists and policymakers alike have been studying them to better understand real world applications. So, what can we learn from these virtual economies and how can they be applied in real world situations? One interesting fact about the World of Warcraft economy was the introduction of the WoW token. For those who are not in the know, World of Warcraft is a massively multiplayer online game that is set in the fictional world of Azeroth. WoW tokens allow players to exchange real-world currency for gold and vice versa. This feature provides a direct way to benchmark WoW gold against the value of the US dollar. It has also had a significant impact in the game, as before, buying gold was considered illegal, illegal, right? And uh, it could get you a lifetime ban on your account, which for a lot of players who've been playing for years was a risk that no one was willing to take. It also had a significant impact as third-party sellers are technically technically allowed, but not technically allowed. So this allowed players a legitimate way to interact with the economy if you didn't have time to sit and grind gold for hours and hours on end. An interesting data point that arose from this is that we could now benchmark how much in-game events cost uh, players to participate. World of Warcraft has an event called the Race to World First, which in essence is a race to kill the, the latest boss on the hardest difficulty. This entire event is pretty much run by a few elite guilds, and it was estimated that in order to just compete and let alone not win, you needed to spend over $100,000 worth of in-game, well, real money and in in-game currency. So how was this calculation done? An uh, a single WoW token is worth $20. So the following graph shows the different exchange rates between the WoW token and the actual in-game gold you get for different region. If you look, you can see at the uh, light green line, that is the Chinese region. The Chinese region is the most active region in World of Warcraft, meaning that there's the most players. This sees more gold being in circulation as more people are competing and earning gold and farming gold, which means you can see hyperinflation points throughout it. You can also see that the US region has the lowest inflation as it has the least active amount of players. So it makes sense. And an interesting fact is if you look at the green graph, it doesn't go all the way to the end because uh, World of Warcraft is no longer available in China. Because for those who don't know, to publish a game in China as a Western company, you have to go through a Chinese publisher to get your game there. And recently, Blizzard had a falling out with their publisher, so we don't have the latest data to deal with uh, the Chinese region. As we continue to explore the intersection between real-world economies and game economies, it's important to look at specific examples that illustrate their impact. In 2018, the virtual currency of World of Warcraft, which is known as gold, was worth more than the Venezuela and Bolivia, the country's official currency. This is due to the economic crisis that occurred in Venezuela during 2018, which caused hyperinflation and rapid depreciation of the currency. In contrast, World of Warcraft's carefully designed virtual economy was able to maintain predictable currencies with predictable inflation rates. This saw many Venezuelans playing games like World of Warcraft and RuneScape in order to learn a basic living. At the peak of the crisis, World of Warcraft's gold was worth seven times the Bolivia currency, which is kind of crazy. Most virtual economies have to deal with the unique issue of infinite inflation. Gold is a reward that is given to players for interacting with the game. This is, in a sense, an infinite reward. The more players that interact with the game, the more gold that is produced, the more gold that enters the economy. Now, to deal with this infinite inflation, uh, the devs use a process called gold sinks, which is essentially mechanisms to remove gold from the economy to keep the value of the currency stable. Examples of gold sinks in games like WoW would be auction house fees, equipment repairing, travel costs, those type of things that force the player to spend cash or spend their gold and remove it from the economy. By doing this, the game was able to uh, maintain a stable state, which was utilized by Venezuelans during the 2018 uh, crisis. Pivoting away from Warcraft, there are also other models that use, there are also other virtual economy models. These are mostly seen in games like Dota and CSGO. This model uses items, with this model uses gambling to produce pseudo scarcity in items, which players are then useful or use to, to buy with real money. The emphasis here is on the item and not necessarily the currency, although in practice, it's pretty much the same thing as 
items like gold are an infinite resource and infinite inflation has to be dealt with. The, the, the issue with this type of model is that it leaves the economy open to real world exploitation. One of these issues is money laundering, very nice. Money laundering occurs in these virtual economies where people will go in and use illicit funds to buy items and then sell them on marketplaces where they can sell these items for real world currency again. In fact, cleaning money. This is most efficiently done by buying low drop chance items that the community actively sorts out after so you can clean money fast and efficiently. An example of this would be CSGO knives. This can be, CSGO knives can be bought through third party websites or the official Steam marketplace for real currency. This process combined with the fact that the, the, the drop rate is gambling for these items can inflate virtual item prices to insane levels. I'm talking like four to 5,000 Rand for a knife, a virtual one. Over here on this next page, you can see the top five most popular knives. At number one, it is $6,400 for a knife. Now, if you do the quick maths on that, that's like 120,000 rand. That's like an 05 Honda. That's crazy, right? On like a virtual car, on a virtual knife. And if you also look at it, uh, all of them have something in common. They're all red. So another aspect of the gambling comes in is that for Valve games like Dota and CSGO, that it's not just about getting the item, but it's also about getting specific drops of the item. So there's generally three rarity tiers, your normal version, your gold tier, and then your, what is known as your crimson tier. And as you can see, all of these knives are what belongs to the crimson tier. This underscores the importance of understanding and regulating these economies in an attempt to prevent illicit activities like money laundering from occurring. While the vast majority of players participate in these economies for legitimate purposes, it's important for game developers and, policy and policymakers to work together to ensure that they are not being exploited for criminal purposes. Overall, virtual economies come in many flavors. The examples of World of Warcraft and Valve's games Dota and CSGO demonstrate the fascinating and complex uh, relationship between virtual economies and real world economies. While these economies may just seem like games, they can have real world impacts on being able to provide players with a legitimate way to earn an income and also being exploited for illicit activities like money laundering. As virtual economies continue to grow and evolve, it is important for policymakers, economists, and game devs to work together to understand their inner workings and design systems that promote stability and fairness. By doing so, we can ensure that all virtual economies continue to offer benefits to players and society as a whole and are not exploited for criminal or harmful purposes. Thank you.